Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 34 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will now talk about the third organism that is frog. Nothing much to introduce a frog. I mean, the way you all are familiar with cockroach, similarly, you all are very familiar with a frog as well. So, frog falls under the category of vertebrates, those with a vertebral column. These are cold blooded animals. So, what do you mean by cold blooded animals? Those animals are. Uh, for example, human beings, we are all warm blooded animals. That means the, our body temperature, the internal body temperature can change according to the external temperature. For example, when it is very cold outside, the internal body temperature adapts itself in such a way that we can adapt ourselves to the cold environment. So that is what is warm blooded animals. Cold blooded animals means their temperature remains constant. They cannot regulate their internal temperature based on external temperature. So frogs are cold blooded animals. Frogs camouflage. What do you mean when I say camouflage? That means they can change their colors depending on the situation. For example, let us suppose if a frog is there um, say in some area, it suddenly sees a predator who can catch the frog and eat it up. So in order to save himself, what will the frog do? It will change its color. For example, if it is if it, the frog is between all green trees and bushes, it will try to change it, its color to green and then hide into the bushes. Because when the frog is green and the trees are also green, the predator might not be able to identify or might not be able to see the frog. So that is how it can escape. So this is known as camouflage. That means to change color as per the color of the environment in order to save itself. Talking about the habitat, they live on both land and water and that is why they are often known as amphibians. Amphibians means those animals which can live both on land as well as water. Food, they are carnivorous that is they eat flesh. They can consume insects or small animals. So that is a brief introduction to frog. Let us look at some of the basic chordata characteristics which are present in a frog as well. Complex body differentiation because when you actually look into the different phyla of a kingdom animalia, now as you go down, you start with the porifers that is sponges and then you talk about cylindrates, you talk about nematodes, annelids, arthropods, mollusks. So as you go down the complexity of the body increases. So chordata comes almost towards the end. So they have complex body organization. Body is bilaterally symmetrical again if you divide it in between you get two symmetrical halves. Body made up of three layers of cells that is triploblastic so they also have ecto, endo and mesoderm. Silomic cavity is present so they are silomate. So body cavity is present so they are silomate. Some uniqueness, notochord is present so, so that is a special thing because of which all animals fall under chordata due to the presence of a notochord. Dorsal hollow nerve cord is also present. Paired pharyngeal gill slits are also present. So these gill slits will help in exchange of oxygen. So basically they will help in respiration. They have organ system level of organization that is cells group together form tissues, tissues group together form organs and then organs group together to form organ systems. So they have organ system level of organization. They are mobile, of course, they can move from one place to another. So now we will start looking at the morphology as well as anatomy of frog. So let us start with morphology and in that also let us start with the body. How, uh, how does the body of a frog look like? Uh, I mean, what are the things which are present on the body? So they have smooth, moist skin. So generally, if you touch a frog, you will always find them slimy and smoothy. 
However, they have dark irregular spots on dorsal side of the body. So somewhere around this, this side, this is the dorsal side. So here you will often see some spots like this, which are normally absent towards the ventral side, that is towards the below side, the belly region. That side, mostly these spots are not seen. It is present only on the dorsal side. The entire body can be divided into two parts, head and trunk. So which portion is head? This portion is head and the remaining portion is trunk. So this entire portion can be trunk. So broadly it can be divided into two parts, head and trunk. So neck is absent in case of rock. You do not have a separate neck. Tail is also absent. You do not see a tail because in many cordates you see a tail. Eyes are bulged out. That is again another characteristic feature. So if you look at the eyes of frog, you see it is bulging out. It is like as if a, a, a sphere is attached externally. You can feel that bulging out. So eyes needed protection. Now, as I said, frogs can stay in on land as well as in water. Now, when they are inside water, since the eyes are bulging out, they need to be they need to be protected when in water. So, how are they protected? They are covered by a special nictitating membrane which protect the bulged out eyes from water. So that is why eyes are protected by nictitating membrane when they are in water. Tympanum present as auditory receptor. So here if you see just below the eye, you have another spot. So this is nothing but tympanum. It acts as, it, it is analogous to ear. It is like ear. It helps the frog to listen to different sounds. So this is basically a membranous structure and it receives the sound signals. Talking about locomotion, as I said, they can move from one place to another. They have different locomotory organs like the forelimbs, hind limbs and the webbed feet. So these are the forelimbs. These pair of limbs are the forelimbs. This pair of leaves, uh, I mean, limbs are the hind limbs. And where do we have the webbed feet? So when you look at the feet, you will actually see that it is not only like this, but it is also webbed like this. So they are connected like this. So what do they do? The four limbs help in. These four limbs help in walking, burrowing, because they burrow into the soil. So all these things are done by four limbs. The hind limbs are larger when compared to the four limbs and they are more muscular as well. So these limbs, they have more muscles. So that is why they can help in jumping and hopping. Whereas when you talk about the webbed feet, they help in swimming. So you see due to the presence of different types of locomotory organs, they are able to stay in water as well as on land because when in water, they need to swim. Again, when on land, they need to walk or jump or hop. So since they have different types of locomotory organs, they are very much comfortable in uh, moving, whether they are in uh, land or in water. So let us now again talk about the organs of locomotion in little more detail. As I said, they have four limbs, hind limbs and webbed feet. Right? So four limbs will help in walking, burrowing. Hind limbs are larger, more muscular. So they help in hopping and jumping. Webbed feet, because of their structure, will help in swimming. So with this, we end our discussion on the morphology of frog because I mean, talking about morphology, we'll only talk about the external features. And I already spoke about everything that is visible from outside. So now let us talk about the anatomy of frog. What are the life processes taking place inside the body of a frog? So here we will talk about the different organ systems. So we'll specifically talk about digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system, nervous system, excretory system and reproductive system. Thank you. 
please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.